Today on episode number 897 of the School of Podcasting, we've got a cool Because of My Podcast story. I'm going to talk about what podcasters can learn from sports, and we're going to talk a little crowdfunding. And if you're like, what's that? That's the whole Patreon, Glow, Supercast. We're going to compare the different options for that because some media hosts do that. And then, like I said, there are places like Supercast. We're going to talk about, is there one better solution But more importantly, when should I start one? And really what I want to get into is making sure you have the right mentality if this is a monetization strategy that you're going to pursue. Hit it, ladies. The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. Podcasting Sense 2005. I am your award-winning Hall of Fame podcast coach, Dave Jackson, Thanking you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the show, I like to talk about how to plan, launch, grow, and if you want to, monetize your podcast. My website is schoolofpodcasting.com. If you use the coupon code LISTENER when you sign up for either a monthly or yearly subscription, you can save some money with that coupon. And of course, that comes with a money back guarantee. And so... I heard this question on another podcast, and I kind of had a little bit of a, a twitch, you know, a little nudge that uh, about crowdfunding. And I was just like, mm, I want to share my thoughts on that. And for the record, so many people start a podcast because people aren't talking about what they want to talk about. And before I get to that, I want to remind you that this show is equipped with chapters. So depending on what app you're using, you can probably click a like next button or something like that. So if you're a person that's like, look, Dave, I never want to monetize my show. You can skip to the next section. I've also got it set up to where, again, depending on your app, in some cases I can link to things right there in that. I do that via Hindenburg Journalist. That's what I use. So it makes it easy for you to skip. Now, there is a part of me that goes, wait, why are you making things that people, like, why is it okay to skip? Because again, when it comes to monetization, there are plenty of people that do it for this thing. They get paid in it. It's called, uh, what is it again? Starts with an F. Oh, that's right. Fun. I do it for fun. And that's fine. So what crowdfunding is, is where you, there, there are a couple different ways. You can set up crowdfunding to just have people give you money whenever they feel like it. So these these are things like uh, give buy me a coffee or good old PayPal for those that uh, remember PayPal. PayPal has some weird things in their terms that I need to go back and investigate, but I know a lot of people talk about buy me a coffee. So there's that, and you can use things. Now, the other thing I need to mention here, I work for Libsyn. L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. It's short for Liberated Syndication, and you can get a free month there by using the coupon code SOP free, all one word. So, Dave, how are you going to talk about other competitors to Libsyn? Because there are things like Glow, or the Glow is the Libsyn product. There's Glow, but there's also like Supercast, Buzzsprout, Captivate. There are other media hosts and there are other tools, Supercast. Dave, how are you going to talk about this in a way that is, you know, fair, like, you know, how are you going to hold your integrity? Well, I do that by just providing facts. Like, this is what they do. This is what it costs. And then I let you make the decision. So with that, the first thing we have to talk about, you hear me say it at the beginning of every show, I help you plan, launch, grow, and if you want to, monetize your show. That is the steps. So many people like to skip the planning, they do a launch, and then they want to monetize. Well, you skipped grow, and you can't monetize dust. You just can't, unless maybe you're some sort of dust rag uh, manufacturer. But for the most part, if you don't have an audience, you can't really monetize that. So keep that in mind, which brings up the question, well, when should I start this? Because here's where it fits. You have the people that are getting five-figure downloads, right? They're getting 10,000, 20,000, and more downloads per episode. Those people can get ads. 
Now, for the record, that is not my primary way I recommend people make money with their podcast. The best way is to sell your own product and service. So you are providing a solution to someone. They're like, hey, I wish I could do this better. I wish I could find somebody to do this for me. That's where your podcast comes into play, where you go, hey, you know who can do that? Me. And so that is much, much more profitable than ads. But if you work hard and you get 10,000 downloads per episode, you can get ads. And if you get 10,000 downloads per month, then you can get these things called programmatic ads, which pay much, much, much. And by that, I mean very much less than a host red ad. Right now, a host red ad is about 22 to $25, maybe more, maybe less per 1,000 downloads. So if you are getting 300 downloads an episode, you're not going to get programmatic ads or uh, host red ads, but let's just say you were and they were $25 per CPM, which means $25 per 1,000. Now, a way to look at that is when it's $25 per 1,000 downloads, that is uh, two and a half cents per download. And when you times that by, let's say, 300, well, then you're going to make $7.50. Now, in some cases, that might be a chunk of your media host bill. But on the other hand, it's, you know, it's not even going to pay for a Happy Meal these days in the U.S. So, hence, where does crowdfunding come into play? Crowdfunding is for those person that has a sizable audience. And we're going to talk about that a little later. But you have an audience and it's not enough to get ads. And uh, you're like, okay, well, what else can I do? Well, this is one way of doing it is by having a crowd. Now, here is the stat that nobody wants to talk about. I kind of feel like a dream crusher when I say this because people are like, wait, it's not 10%? No, it's not 7, 5, nope. I typically quote people 3%. And if we go back to that 300 downloads per episode, if I times that by 3%, that means in theory, you'll have eh, nine people sign up for your bonus content. And that is often what is created for a crowdfunding solution. So let's talk about that. What, What do you do? What are you giving people that they will give you money for? Well, the single word answer is value. You're giving them something valuable, which typically means it's going to make them laugh, cry, think, groan, educate, or entertain. It's going to be information that you can't get any place else. So there's that. There's also, you can have episodes. Maybe you are doing ads. Maybe it's programmatic ads. And because they, they pay so little, in in some cases, you know, a half of a cent per download, it's it's really, it's much, much lower than host red ads. But as someone once told me, it's better than a poke in the eye. But if you take a programmatic ad at $5 per 1,000 downloads, you know, that is 0.005 cents per download. And so that's where some people... Instead of saying, for me, I, I'm not putting a programmatic ad in my podcast. For me, point zero zero five, just not worth it. For, for me to take up 30 seconds of your time, that's me. That's my opinion. If you want to do programmatic, that's fine. But some people are like, yeah, but it's only point zero zero five cents. So what they'll do is they'll stack them to the, to the ceiling. Like here is two minutes of ads so that I can make... You know, instead of 0.05, well, I'm going to multiply that by four. And so now I'm making, you know, two cents a download. And again, it's your show, no rules. But what they'll do is they'll say, hey, if these ads annoy you, then you can give me X amount of money a month and get them ad free. I'm actually thinking of doing this as a test. I've never played with Apple subscriptions. I'll talk about them in a bit just to say, wow, I I don't know that I would ever use this, but if you're new to the show, I like to test everything. I like to base my opinions on facts and whenever possible, first 
uh, in like something I did. Not that I don't trust other people's opinions, but I like to make my own opinions based on actions I take. So here's the thing. It's a very long way to get to this is again, 3% of your audience is going to maybe sign up for this. And I got that because I've heard radio lab, a very popular science show. They were doing kind of a, uh, you know, on public uh, TV here, PBS in the U S they break in all the time and do a fundraiser. Well, radio lab was doing that and they announced they were trying to get up to 1%. When I talked to the people at teachable, which is a very popular course creation tool, they told people, Hey, when you launch your, uh, you know, your paid for course, 2% of your audience is going to sign up. And when I interviewed people for my book, profit from your podcast, uh, proven strategies to turn listeners into a livelihood. Uh, most of the people I talked to, it was around 3%. And if that's not enough, here's the guy that invented podcasting, uh, Adam Curry, talking about this on Podcasting 2.0. Not going to get everybody to send you uh, value. It's only going to no. be 3 or 4%. And this is Eric Barnett, Director of Sales and Marketing at Supporting Cast on the Podglomerate Show. If you offer ad-free, and that's going to be the only sort of benefit that you offer, you can realistically expect anywhere from a half a percent to 1% of your subscribers to convert within the first year, up to maybe 2% over the course of three years. So that was ad-free. Then he later broke down if it is bonus content. If you look at like bonus content, right, you can then convert, you know, anywhere in the first year, you'll typically see about anywhere from three to 5% of your uh, listener base. And that's usually will average about if you look at downloads per episode, three to five percent of that will convert if you're offering a compelling enough uh, bonus content structure within the first year. That will usually go up to around eight percent over the course of like three years or so. And in the same way that there's that one person that's just getting one percent, there are people that are doing really, really well. And I'll have more examples of that in just a second. You know, Nathan Duncan and Dunk Don, there was a five day week daily podcast that was free. That is the grow phase. Got it. So they started off, they planned, they launched, they grew via a free podcast. Then they turned on the monetization. All five days were free. And when they partnered with us, um, you know, they made the decision like, okay, we're going to pay well the majority of this content. And they pay well four of their five days. So Monday through Thursday is subscriber only. And Friday is their free show that's available to everybody. And, you know, they converted in their case, like 25, 30% of their audience converted over to a paid subscriber and for a midsize show of roughly like 20, 30 style downloads per episode. Like that's a lot of money. And, and that's like a lot of money that is, you know, curable that they can track. And so there is a world in which you can make way more money from subscriptions than you can from advertising just because of how dedicated your audience. Is. So let's not overlook. He just said that particular show had 20,000 downloads. So let's talk about when do I use this strategy? Because here again, ads are not the only way to make money. I've had ads on this show and I get nowhere near 10,000 downloads an episode. I get somewhere between 1,500 and 3,000. It varies all over the place, but we, we'll say 2,000 just to make it easy. And I've had ads from microphone manufacturers. I've had ads from editors. It just, it makes no sense. I make more money promoting the school of podcasting than I do having advertisers. And if I'm going to talk about somebody that you should be using, I want to talk about me. So keep that in mind. But what if you're like, David, I don't have a product or service. This is where not having 10,000 downloads, you might be able to get some money in for that. So let's turn our attention. And if you're listening to this, I will have a pretty little chart for you if you go out to schoolofpodcasting.com slash 897. So before we get into all the players, I want to give you a best practice, and that is do not create a membership level that is a dollar. By the time all the processing takes place, you're going to end up with almost nothing, and anyone who's willing to give you a dollar is probably willing to give you five. So let's get into some of the players. And I looked into this and I said, what's the average donation for Patreon? Because they are, again, the first mover. They're kind of the Kleenex. They're kind of the Xerox. A lot of times, like for instance, uh, supporting cast in some cases will describe themselves as a white labeled Patreon. And so 
I looked up Patreon. The average donation is $7, probably because some people are doing fives and some people are doing 10 and some people are doing 20. The other best practice I would say is make a level that you think no one will ever spend that much money because you will be surprised. For some people, if you go, all right, it's I'm, it's five dollars a month, and you realize there's that person that's like five dollars, and then there are other people like, did you say five hundred? Because he's like an oil tycoon. I got five hundred right here in my couch cushions. Here, just take it. I like your show. You're funny, right? So don't put a ceiling on that. We are going to mention value for value here at the end because it's another stream of income that is so easy to set up. So I'm going with $7. I'm saying everyone, we had one person that signed up for seven bucks and at Patreon, after all their fees, I made $6 and 44 cents at glow.fm, which for the record owned by Libsyn, they made $5 and 95 cents at Supercast. It'd be $5 and 91 cents. If we rounded up Buzzsprout, We'll talk about Buzzsprout and Captivate. They're they're really cool here in just a second. Five ninety five, so a little more than Supercast. Captivate, uh, five dollars and sixty six cents. Apple, four dollars and ninety cents. Apple takes thirty percent, where the other ones like Captivate, Buzzsprout are taking fifteen. Patreon is taking eight. And the fun thing about Apple is they take thirty percent, and you get zero information about your customers. So if you want to like move to someplace else, you can't because they're not your customers. They're apples. Thank you very much. Oh, also have fun subscribing on an Android phone. So for me, I love Apple. I love my iPhone, but come on, Apple. I mean, make some sort of Android app for Apple podcasts. Cause you know, you're not stupid. Uh, Spotify takes five and a half percent And they add some other fees. They actually add a fee every time you withdraw your money. And I'm like, okay, so $6.41, which sounds like a great deal because 5.5% is much lower than the 8% you get from, say, Patreon or some of these other ones. But it's, you know, you're 20 cents every time you take money out. Like, why? It's, It's my money. Why are you charging me to get my money? It's very weird. Plus, they have other fees. And then this is the one that drives me nuts. I met these guys at Podcast Movement. I hate software companies. You ready for a rant? Hold on. Dave pops a cork in five, four, three, two. I hate when companies don't put their pricing online and it's like schedule a demo. Because in my head, that means, hey, we want to find out how much money you have so we can figure out what to charge you. Every other company, like, here's our pricing, like, Captivate's like, hey, here's our pricing, and in case you don't understand it, let's say you make this much money, here's how much money you're going to make. So, supporting cast looks really impressive, but the the brochure I got from Podcast Movement says 8 to 12%. And I was like, okay, and I I get it, but why not just put the pricing, like, what's the 12%? Because Patreon has a thing where they charge you more if you want to do like merchandise and stuff. But no, I want to figure out so I can tell you, hey, for 8%, you get the typical, you know, uh, private feed, blah, blah, blah. But is that on their website? Nope. Just schedule a demo. And look at all the famous people that use our stuff. Ugh, drives me nuts. And so I went to YouTube figuring surely there's got to be some sort of you know, supporting cast kind of, nope. That's where I found uh, Eric on the, um, whatever that was, Podglomerate show. So I get it, but I, I don't really know what they do for 12%. Now I will say from their brochure that I'm holding in my hand from Podcast Movement, it looks impressive and it's the same kind of fee as Patreon with a much easier implementation. So there are a couple things I want to talk about now in terms of implementation. The worst implementation is Patreon because, and I'm really surprised they haven't built this in yet. With Patreon, you have to educate your audience, which may or may not be that technical, how to go into Patreon, get their RSS feed. Don't click on it because you'll get a face full of code. No, no, copy it and then paste it into your favorite app, assuming 
your favorite app allows you to paste in an outside URL where things like glow.fm, supercast, um, uh, slate again, that's, um, supporting cast. They all do that. I believe captivate and buzzsprout do as well. So really in a nutshell, the worst implementation, making it harder for the listener is Patreon. That's why I always tell people, look, if you can get something with the same fees as Patreon, go that route. Now, the one thing I do want to point out here, and since this is a Libsyn owned product, I'm just stating the facts. All these other ones, Buzzsprout, Captivate, Apple, Spotify, Slate, even Patreon, they allow you to upload your media files directly to them. So they are a media host for your premium content. You wouldn't want to use these for a free kind of open to the public thing where glow their fees do not include a media host. So now obviously they recommend Libsyn and the least expensive plan over there is $5, but realize with all these other ones, you don't have to go get hosting. It's built in. So that is something, again, that's just a fact. I'm just relaying the facts. So if we look at this and judge by only who gives me the most money out of my $7, that would go to supporting cast. Now, again, it drives me nuts because I'm getting their pricing from a brochure, not from their website with zero details, but we'll take them at their word at their brochure followed by Patreon, followed by Spotify, followed by Buzzsprout, uh, Glow.fm, asterisk again. You would need a media host with that. Supercast and Captivate, and then last but not least, Apple. And so what you then want to look at is how easy is it for your audience to sign up? And that's where, to me, Patreon is almost eliminated because you have to teach people how to copy an RSS feed and paste it into that. So supporting cast Spotify, well, Spotify, here's the fun one. Again, are they going to give you a feed so you can listen to someplace outside of Spotify? Probably not. So that to me is the one thing we've learned with, you know, I know Spotify has spent over a billion dollars but we have learned something. And if you listen to the old episodes of my of this show, I used to say, you will pry overcast from my cold, dead hands. And that was very true until another app came along that looked and smelled and pretty much tasted like overcast, except it also did the streaming Satoshi thing, which we will talk about here shortly. And so I switched. But I, I think they thought that people would just willy nilly switch from, you know, Apple podcast to Spotify or from pocket cast or whatever you're using. And I, I think we're kind of not into that. So that's another thing I would throw uh, Spotify out of this buzzsprout and, and captivate do make it easy. Buzzsprout actually gives you links to popular apps. So it's, it's like a two click subscription Captivate makes it easy, but you do have to copy and paste. And again, depending on the technical level of your audience, that may be a bit of a headache to sign up. Apple again, uh, I guess the 70% of people that listen to shows on Android in Europe, sorry, have fun subscribing. So that leaves us with a, a you know supporting cast. Again, I only know from the brochure, Buzzsprout. And I'm going to throw Glow out. I know that's a Libsyn customer or Libsyn company, but the fact that I have to get my own media host. So let's go supporting cast, uh, Buzzsprout, Captivate, and Supercast. And of all of those, they're, I think they're all fine. The thing that's interesting about Buzzsprout and Captivate, these are media hosts primarily, and they have added the ability to add, you know, premium content or whatever you want to call it, ad free. It's all the same. And they make it very easy now to say, Hey, here's an episode. And if this is a premium show and you click on it, it's going to say, Hey, this is premium only. And there's a button right there for you to subscribe. Captivate makes it really easy. If you want to 
this is a, a weird feature. Let, let's say if you're a premium member, you get the show three days before the rest of the world. That sounds cool. Like, oh, I got early access. Uh, but on the other hand, if the rest of the world gets your show on Wednesday and your show came out on Monday, they're just going to get used to the new schedule of like, oh, this comes out three days later. So I'm not sure that's a huge draw, but it is something that sounds good. Ooh, you get early access to the content. They also both have the ability to have, for lack of a better phrase, just tipping. Somebody just wants to give you some money. We'll talk about that here in a second. And Captivate has an interesting thing where it'll automatically make a page to show people who have supported the show, which is kind of a nice little bonus. So both of those make it easy and it's integrated into it. And I know with uh, both Captivate and Buzzsprout, they put ads, ads, they put, uh, what's the word, marketing copy into your show notes that say click here to, you know, subscribe, which is kind of handy. And it's right there in your show. So both of those being media hosts make it easy then to subscribe. So the reason I bring up ease of use is I do support at Libsyn and part of that support is for Glow and Glow does have one really easy function and that is subscribing. Very much like Buzzsprout and Supercast, that's another one that's super easy, it gives you the whole which app do you want to listen to. You know, is there are people that really just don't get when you say copy and paste and they go, what do you mean by that? And you're like, oh, challenge accepted. Okay. So think about that because you are going to be the support. Now you can send people to your media host, which is what in this case Glow does. We, you know, the uh, Michael Savage is a, a customer of Glow. And so they just tell them, oh, go talk to the Glow people and they'll get you connected. And so that's perfectly fine. Just realize in some cases, you know, you might want to ask them, hey, am I my own tech support or can I send people to Captivate or Buzzsprout to help my audience figure out how to, you know, listen to this paid premium content that they got? So there's something I just want to say, don't overlook which one's easier to use because based on your audience, you might need something that's two clicks away which the ones I just mentioned along with uh, supporting cast make it fairly easy to get your information. In a minute, I'm going to share with you the one thing that will really make this not work at all right after this. People have asked, well, when should I do this? Let's say you you said, you know, look, Dave, I know it's a small portion of my audience is going to do this. How many downloads do I need before I should even think about this? And I've heard some people say 100. And if you think about that, 3% of 100 is three people. You know, I've heard other people say 1,000. It really is up to you. But here is my biggest worry. And this is why I want to emphasize this whole, again, I'm not trying to be a dream crusher, but it is plan, launch, grow your audience. That is step three. And that's the one where you go, you you thought creating the episode was the hard part. It's not. It's not easy. But the hard part is getting people to listen. I went through probably eight different variations of my book. And when that final one was, they're like, yep, we're going to go to publish. I was like, thank goodness. And then it dawned on me that the part of getting people to read your book is actually harder than writing the book. And it's kind of the same with podcasts. Obviously, the better your content, the more engaging your content, the more likely your audience is to share. But what I'm worried about is you're taking, let's say you have two hours a day to spend on promoting your podcast and going to where people are making friends and telling them about your show. And now you start this premium thing and that that grow time goes down to about 15 minutes because now you're worried about, well... What should the premium show be and how can I do this and what am I going to do that? And I've got to have an extra kind of thing. And I, I saw on a Buzzsprout video, they said, really, you should start off with just, hey, if you want to support the show because you like it, start there. Because think about it. It's not enough to give them just bonus content. 
Hey, you know the 20 minutes that I cut out of the interview that was boring? If you give me $5 a month, you can hear it. Now, that's not how we promote it, but in some cases, that's kind of what you're getting. Case in point, Adam Curry. This is the thing that has always bothered me. What you're listening to now is crap. Pay me for the good yes, stuff. Yes. So the bonus content has to still deliver value. Think about this. People are opening their wallet and handing you money. What are you doing for them that's going to deliver value? I've seen some people try, and I'm just going to throw out strategies. If you want to try them, you can. But I've seen people like join our membership and then you will get coupons for when you buy more things from me. That to me, I, I guess if I wanted to do the math, I could figure out like, wow, if I give them $5 a month, I can save $20 here. But anytime I got to make my audience do math, like really? Okay. If you say so. The other thing about bonus episodes, and again, I say this from a person who was supporting this is if you want to make your members, your premium listeners upset, promise them bonus episodes and then don't give them any. That does not go over well, my friend. I'm here to tell you, don't do that because not only will they go, how do I stop giving this person money? But they're going to go tell a friend, whatever you do, that person is a weenie. Don't give them any money. So I'm here to tell you, think long and hard when the answer is, hey, I'm going to give you bonus episodes because what you've basically just told yourself without like thinking about it is, hey, you know how I spend eight hours a week making this one podcast? I'm going to have to find another eight hours to create a second podcast because it has to deliver value. So again, I'm not trying to discourage you from using this strategy. There are people that are absolutely killing it. But you got to be realistic. You can't just give them the table scraps and go, here, here's a bunch of fat that I cut off the steak. Enjoy. It's kind of chewy. But if you want to see what's possible, Patreon, somebody has taken the back end of Patreon. You can make your stats public if you want. And so if you go to graph, G-R-A-P-H, Treon, so T-R-E-O-N dot com, here are some numbers. There's a show called Chapo Trap House. I believe that is a political show. And they're making $180,725 a month. $180,000 a month. The average patron gives them $4.22. The next one I can't even pronounce. It'll be fun to hear me try. It is uh, Aija Josupa Aka. Mm -hmm. That show, they make $46,000 a month. The average is eight. Uh Chapo Trap House, by the way, and this is the key point I want to make here. When did they start? 2016. Yeah, seven years. Um, the one I can't pronounce, 2018. True Crime Obsessed. Shocking that this would be popular. Uh, $116,000 a month. Average... Uh, patron is $2.74, and they launched in 2018, five years ago. The Yard, $212,000 a month. They started in 2021. That's two years ago. The average patron, $6.62. And then there was one called True Truanon, and this one is all about the pedophile elite. And you'll notice that some of these are very political and very, uh, shall we say, extreme in a way, because there are opinions and then there are extreme opinions, and many of these are extreme, but they're making $102,000 a month. They started in 2019. The average patron gives them $4.08. Now, again, when I say patron, that can be on any platform. It just so happened that uh, Patreon made a back end that you could tie into. So there are people that do this, but if you do this, you have to remind your audience that, hey, I just gave you value. And if you would like to help me keep doing this because you can't get information like this anyplace else, or maybe you just like me, then go to, and this is what I've done. I use Patreon on a show I do, and feel free to use it even though you're listening to the School of Podcasting at uh, 
askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. I made an easy to remember link there. And you can, in this case, I am using Patreon on that because when I started it, it was the only thing available. So make it easy to find again. And if you're using something like a Patreon or whatever that isn't putting it, it's not part of your media host. You have to put it in every episode in the show notes, in your episode description, put a link and remind them. Now, the other thing, and this is where it's hard. This is, again, what I'm worried about. Let's talk about the mentality of this. I mentioned how when you add this strategy, you are probably taking time away from promoting your show to monetizing it. And this is why I listened to a Buzzsprout uh, show, the Buzzcast, and she, the, the person, one of the, the hosts said, oh, you should be asking people to join your subscription the minute you start a podcast. Because if you don't, then there won't be a call to action. And I'm screaming at my dashboard. There should be a call to action. It should be, please tell a friend, not, you know, join my Patreon kind of thing. Now, again, if you want to do that, you can, as long as you have the right mindset. But again, for me, it's plan, launch, grow. And when you first start, you should be asking your audience to share. That should be the number one call to action. Then once you get to whatever level you think is appropriate, then you could monetize. So yeah, I get her point. There should be a call to action. I'm just not sure I agree because if you ask people to share it and then you see your numbers start to grow, then you're going to feel encouraged. If you ask people to join some sort of crowdfunding and you don't have a crowd yet, that could be soul crushing. It shouldn't be because you don't have an audience yet. But when you see, well, I've got, you know, 18 listeners. Why hasn't one person at least signed up? And it's kind of soul crushing. Then if you do the math, right, 3% of 18 is half a person. Half a person cannot sign up. And what happens then is you get depressed. I'm, I'm putting all this time into this. And I'm not making any money. And that's my biggest worry of starting some sort of crowdfunding. If you want to start it, if you're using something like a Captivate or a Buzzsprout, by all means, you can turn it on and make it easy for people to give you money if they want to. If you're using PayPal, and we'll talk about some other options for just tipping here in a second, but I worry that when you finally decide, hey, I'm going to try to make money at this, and you don't because it's highly likely that, again, a small percentage is going to do this, and you may not have enough people to actually get an actual person, then you quit. You started your podcast because you wanted to serve an audience and you wanted to have fun, and I get it. There comes a point when you're like, look, I'm spending you know, 5 to 15 hours a week doing this thing. I got to get some return on investment and I get that. And this is where I say, absolutely, if you want to turn on some sort of crowdfunding as one of your streams of income, don't make it the only one, have affiliate marketing, have crowdfunding. If you've got enough downloads, then you can do ads, you know, all sorts of things like that. But I worry that when you turn this on, you're going to go, nobody's paying me anything. This isn't worth it. So I always say it's the two biggest, most important questions you have to ask yourself is why am I doing this? And if, if the goal was, I want to have friends with my, I want to have fun with my friends in the basement, then congratulations, you're successful. If you want to be seen as an expert after a couple of episodes, you have put that in place. Now you just have to promote it. You, but you can be successful using a podcast to make yourself seen as a thought leader. If the goal is to make money quickly, that's where many shows kind of end up driving into the wall. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying it's not likely because again, you can't monetize dust. All right, last up here. And then we're going to get to a really cool because of my podcast story. Let's talk about just having a way for people to give you money that want to do that. And there is buy me a coffee. 
So again, let's pretend somebody gave me $7. I would get $6.65. PayPal, I would take $6.30. Captivate, again, has it built in. If you just want to turn on $6.15. And Glow, $6.50. So in that aspect, you know, Glow comes in number two. And you can use Glow without a feed. If you just want to use Glow as a tipping tool, you can. The If you compare features to features, Glow, you have to send people to a Glow website. So glow.fm slash your website. Where buy me a coffee and captivate, uh, you can, it's actually right in your, your show notes. Uh, you can put a button or a link to buy me a coffee right in your site. And of course you could make a link to glow as well. Buy me a coffee integrates into pod page, which is a tool I'm very fond of. Check it out. Try That's my affiliate link. If you want to learn pod page, learn links in the show notes, but you can actually have like this little floating coffee cup on your website. So if somebody wants to chip in, you can do that. Uh, buy me a coffee used to be just kind of a tipping thing. And it, it now you can like I'm using buy me a coffee for the podcast rodeo show where you can go over and order a first impression review. So if you want to know what somebody thinks of your the first five to 10 minutes of your show, go to podcast rodeo show dot com slash store and you'll see that will take you to my buy me a coffee. So it can be more than tipping. But in the land of tipping, buy me a coffee is one of the platforms that gives you the most money. Now, when it comes to PayPal, there was some backlash because there was a clause, I believe in their user agreement where they could find you $2,500 for what people were calling the misinformation ban. And that's a very wide, not very specific, but that was the problem. They then pulled it back and said, no, no, we were just kidding. And they have since kind of put it back is they brought back this kind of misinformation ban, but it's current policies, which include vague speech restrictions that are subject to $2,500 liquidated damages provisions that include certain sexuality or certain sexually oriented materials or services and any promotion of hate, violence, racial, or other forms of intolerance that is discriminatory or the financial exploitation of a crime. It, needs to be a little more specific, even though that sounds pretty specific. And of course, who decides all that is PayPal. So some people were like, yeah, I'm not going to even stand anywhere near that. So that's one thing you need to know about PayPal. And if you're bored, just Google the phrase Patreon censorship and you'll get many, many pages. One of which was they objected to some anime picture because I guess the boobs were too big of a character that doesn't exist. It's fake. It was very strange, but nonetheless, they asked that the character be taken offline. Hey, this is future Dave. As I was wrapping this up, I looked into Stripe and it turns out you can make a link in Stripe for people to donate. And they much like glow only charge 2.9% plus a 30 cent transaction fee And it sounds like buy me a coffee is better because they only charge 5%. But once you go over, say, $20, $20 at buy me a coffee, they take a dollar, $20 at Stripe or Glow, and you take home $19.12. And again, pennies make dollars. So when I say buy me a coffee is the best one, that's only if you're getting less than, say, you know, $15. Keep that in mind. Now back to past Dave. The one, one other thing I mentioned of Buzzsprout is if you have people sign up for a monthly fee, you can have them make up their own price. Like you can say, well, you could give us $3, but if you want to give us 10, you can do that. And that's the last thing I want to bring up is there is, it's really, really new. I've talked about this before, but you can actually have your audience stream very, very very, and by that I mean like really small pieces of Bitcoin. And I realize as soon as I say Bitcoin, some of you are like, Ugh, I get it. But pennies make dollars. And if you can copy and paste, you can set your show up. 
because if you have any of these tools, again, go in with the right mindset. Don't get too focused on how much money did I make, but be pleasantly surprised if somebody does give you that. And so there is a website. If you go to podcastapps.com, you can see this is the, the tricky part. Remember how I said people don't like to switch from one app to another, but it's simple. I'll have a link in the show notes to a video that shows you exactly how to set your show up to receive Bitcoin. And it's as simple as you copy and paste something into a website that proves that, hey, I'm the owner of this show. Then you there's a website you sign up at called Get Albi. Uh, it's the, the website's called Albi, but the website is getalbialby.com. And you basically copy, paste, copy, paste, takes you all of five minutes. And then your audience can give you, the longer they listen, the more, and the the term is Satoshi. In the same way that here in the United States, we have a dollar and then pennies. Well, a Bitcoin is like the big number. And then one one millionth of a Bitcoin is called a Satoshi. And you can let your audience that are kind of geeky do that. And if you're like, ah, my audience isn't that geeky, set it up anyway, because you just never know. And then you can transfer your Satoshis into, you know, some way to get that into money. That's a whole other topic. But I just wanted to let you know that the nice thing about having subscriptions, and in this case, what we call value for value with the streaming Satoshis, there's no sponsor. So if I say booger, and you're like, I can't believe he said, how dare you say booger, sir, good day, right? And you're like, I'm going after your sponsors. And they start battering uh, better help and, you know, blue apron and like, I can't believe that man said booger, you know? Well, okay. Well, it, it's now directly between you and your audience. And with the streaming Satoshis, they can give you as much as they want. So that oil tycoon that goes, I got 500 right here. Yeah. Boost away, buddy. It's really, really cool. And this show is set up, by the way, for that. So if you're listening on something like Cast Magic or, you know, uh, all sorts of other ones, find them at, you know, again, podcastapps.com, you can send me a boost and a message. So I've done that. I just sent a message to Adam Curry that said, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you and your wife in Houston. And I sent it with just, yeah, I, I think I gave him two bucks. But wouldn't it be cool if every piece of email came with two bucks? And if you had 3% of your audience giving you two bucks, again, I'm not going to retire on two bucks, but it's encouragement in some ways that, hey, people are listening and they took the time to send me some money, whether that's Satoshis or money or things like that. If you like a show, then let them know it. Even if it's not money, just reach out to them and say, hey, I really like that show. I'll, I'll give you an example. My last episode, if you go out to schoolofpodcasting.com slash 896, I was, it was one of those where you hit publish and I was like, uh, this, this was not my best work. It was really geeky about how to track where your audience is coming from outside of your podcast stats. And I, I kind of put it out. It's like, man, that's, I'm not sure people are even going to get this because it, it almost needed a video. And I had a couple people send emails like, Hey, more geeky stuff. That was really cool. So it's always great to have feedback and if you hated that episode, by all means, let me know. Dave, that was a stinker. Uh, I always want to know that too. I'm open to both praise and criticism because I can't fix what I don't know is broken. But just realize you never know. What you don't ask for, you don't get. And sometimes things happen, well, just because of my podcast, just like Keith Fall. Welcome to Because of My Podcast, where we spotlight the results people are achieving because of their podcast. Hi, Dave. This is Keith Fong of the Way of the Quality Warrior podcast. I wanted to share a Because of My Podcast story with you. My podcast is about, you guessed it, quality. It's a solo podcast where I share my thoughts and philosophies about the tools and concepts of quality. Most people in quality and who podcast about quality have backgrounds in industrial engineering or operations. I started my career as a product design engineer, so I tend to have a different perspective, particularly with regard to product and process design, continuous improvement, and problem solving. It's a pretty niche topic, even though the quality function is found in every company. I released my first episode in May 2022, 
and I've been putting out an episode each month. About a year in, so May 2023, I received a message through the contact form on my website asking if I do keynote speeches. The person was seeking an authority in the field and heard my podcast. She thought that what I had to say would be of value to the audience. Now, let's put this into perspective. My download numbers are very modest. Still, because of my podcast, an opportunity has presented itself. As I record this in September 2023, I'm a week away from going to that conference as the keynote speaker. Thanks for your help in getting my podcast launched and for all that you do for the podcast community, Dave. If you're interested in checking out a podcast about quality, go to my website, wayofthequalitywarrior.com. Keith, I'm so happy to hear this and spoken like a true graduate of the School of Podcasting, which Keith is. He gave out his website. You didn't hear him say, oh, find my podcast wherever, find podcast. No, direct people to your website. That's where the magic happens and then make it easy to find that. So thank you so much, Keith, for sharing that. If you have one, go over to schoolofpodcasting.com slash contact, and there's a way you can upload and contact me. I always love a good because of my podcast story. And notice he mentioned his numbers, maybe not, uh, you know, we all want them bigger but it positions you as an expert. I love it. Thank you so much. My last point I want to point out here, and I realize we're running a little longer than usual, but hopefully you're still with me. I appreciate that. I said I was going to talk about what sports and podcasting have to do. And if you look at different things, it all boils down to storytelling. Many things that you read and listen to and watch and I was, uh, football season has just started here, American football season for my friends across the pond. And there was an older gentleman named Aaron Rodgers. He was the quarterback and he was this staple of a guy for this one team for decades. And he's old, so he was kicked to the curb and he's got a new team. And what a story, right? Does he still have it in him? And literally four plays into the season, he tore his hamstring and it's going to be out pretty much for the rest of the year. So, so one of the few times I listen to the radio is when I'm making my breakfast. So I go in, I ask the woman in the tube from Amazon to play the local station. And this guy said, man, Aaron Rodgers, he goes, that was the story of the season. That's what we're, and I was like, you know what? It really is. If you watch sports, they talk about, oh, here's the defensive end or the, the goalie of so-and-so and his daughter has cancer and we're rooting for her or whatever. Or if it's NASCAR, back in the day, my brother used to watch NASCAR like it was religion. And I'm like, dude, I cannot sit down for three hours and watch people turn left. I just, But it wasn't about people turning left. It was about how Tony hates that guy and he used to work for the team. And now the owner of that team started a new team and drama, 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 who's going to win and I was like, you know what? I think most of sports and and even think about this uh, Monday night, as you're listening to this, if you're listening to it when it first comes out, I live near Cleveland, Ohio. I'm actually in Akron, but you know, we, we root for the Cleveland Browns because they're the closest and uh, they're playing our rival, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And if you have a, a young person, you tell them, Hey, little, you know, Davey Jr., um, we're playing the Steelers, and, and we hate them. They're our rival. Why? Well, because my dad told me that's our rival, and Cleveland is a steel town, and so is Pittsburgh. So that's why we want to really beat them badly. I'm like, what? It's like made-up drama so that you root for this one game out of the year. Oh, we got to beat them because they're – who cares? But it's part of the story. It's part of the fun. It's more, this game's more important. Oh, really? Do you, do you make more money if you win this one? No, but you get bragging rights. So silly, but it's part of the story. And so think about whatever industry, whatever podcast you're in. Anytime, I always say, if you can make a point about anything in your show by starting it off with, you know, speaking of so-and-so or speaking of this topic, there was one time when I did this and such and such and such and such, and here's a point and oh my gosh, is Dave going to make it? I don't know what's going to happen next. More story, couple stakes. Ooh, wow. That would hurt if it didn't work, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why such and such. And then you make your point and they go, oh yeah, that makes sense. And they've also learned a little bit about you. So 
Think about explaining things with a story. If you haven't bought the book Story Worthy by Matthew Dix, I highly recommend that book. It is so good. And lastly, if you know somebody who's thinking they should monetize their show, could you do me a favor and point them at this episode? It would really mean the world to me, as well as your friend, and uh, we both win. Your friend gets great information. You get to look cool because you found it, and I get to grow my audience. You could even point them at my book, Profit from Your Podcast, Proven Strategies to Turn Your Listeners into a Livelihood. And of course, if you don't have a podcast yet, you heard what happened to Keith. Well, come visit me over at schoolofpodcasting.com slash listener, and that will save you on either a monthly or yearly subscription. Thanks so much for listening. I deeply appreciate it. And I'll see you next week with another episode of the School of Podcasting. Till then, take care. God bless. Class is dismissed. We're going to talk about some of the top players here, but before we do, before, yeah, before we do that, before we do that, <laughs> and then you can have another link in the Bible, on the Bible, the link of the, oh, dang it, come on, mouth. <laughs>